Hey, what's up, Micro Church? Have you ever been in one of those arguments where you're trying to determine who the greatest is? Maybe, maybe you're trying to determine whether you're the greatest or someone else is the greatest, or maybe uh, you're in that that massive debate of who is the real goat: Michael Jordan or LeBron James. Right? Some people are going to come out and they're going to say, LeBron James, here are his stats, here's this, here's that. I'm going to come out and say Michael Jordan. Right, He is the GOAT. He's the one that LeBron is trying to model himself after. I think the new Space Jam movie shows us that. Right, But, but here's the deal. We all kind of get in those arguments of who the greatest is. Maybe it's Tom Brady. Maybe it's Patrick Mahomes. I don't know. Right, The, the arguments are all out there. But what we're going to see in today's passage in Mark chapter 9, verses uh, 30 through 37, um, we're going to see this argument take place amongst the disciples. But when we see what happens first is Jesus, he actually predicts his, uh, or talks about his, his crucifixion and resurrection one more time. Starting in verse 30, this is what he says. It says, they went on from there and they passed through Galilee and he did not want anyone to know. For he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is going to be delivered into the hands of men, and they will kill him. So he's talking about his death. He's talking about the fact that he's going to die a horrible death, that he's going to be delivered over into the hands of men. And when he is killed, three days he will rise. One thing I want to point out in this, Jesus always, always connects resurrection hope to his death on the cross. Right? He never leaves out the resurrection. When he speaks of his death, he always speaks of the hope that we have in his resurrection. Right? He says, so when he is killed, three days he will rise. But they didn't understand him. They didn't understand what he was saying, and they were afraid to ask him. And so what happened, as they're walking along, instead of asking him this question, they start this debate on who is the greatest. And in verse 33, it says, And they came to Capernaum, and he was in the house, and he asked them, what were you discussing on the way? But they kept silent, for on the way they had argued with one another about who was the greatest, right? Who was the goat? And he sat down, and he called the twelve over, and he said to them, If anyone would be first, he must be the last of all and servant of all. And he took a child, he put him in the midst of them, and in taking him in his arms, embracing this child, he, he said to them, Whoever receives one such child in my name receives me, and whoever receives me receives not me, but him who sent me, right? He receives the Father. So in this, right, Jesus, they're on their way to Galilee. The disciples are having this argument. They're having this discussion of who the greatest is, and, and they get there. They get to their destination. Jesus says, hey, what were y'all talking about on the way, right? And, and he, he busted them. He caught them off guard, and uh, they they were a little nervous about actually coming forth and saying, well, you know, Jesus, we, we got in this discussion of who the greatest was. Um, we know it's me, Peter, but they don't believe it, right? They, they didn't do that. Uh, and so what it says, it says that they remained silent, right? They, they kept silent because they were embarrassed about the discussion. But Jesus, right, didn't keep silent about the issue. In fact, he brings it up. He says, guys, I, I know what you were talking about. You were talking about and you were arguing amongst yourself who the greatest is, right? Which one of you is the greatest? And Jesus says, let me, let me answer that question for you. He, he goes on to say this. He says, if anyone would be first, he must be last of all and servant of all. Right? He must be last of all and servant of all, right? They have to put themselves last. They have to put themselves below everyone else. And he, he gives us a perfect example of this by the, the word picture, the actual representation of having a kid there. And he brings this kid amongst them and he, he sits them down amongst them and he braces them in his arms. And he says, whoever receives one such child as this, right? Children in, in this day and age, they, they weren't revered or uh, coddled or looked at like children in our society are right they we don't we don't they didn't spend thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars on all the baby stuff and all the toddler stuff and all the kids stuff and all the sports activities and and the cars and the proms and all that stuff 
right? Children in this day and age were actually kind of seen as a nuisance because they were another mouth to feed. Right? They were another person to take care of. They didn't contribute much of anything except for maybe some of the chores around the house. And so other than that, man, they were just someone else that the people, the parents, the caretakers had to provide for and take care of. They weren't looked at in the way that we look at disciples. And, and so Jesus uses this picture to show us that, that this child was a perfect representation of anyone who is in need, right? Children are in need of their parents. Children have to be looked at by their parents. They have to be taken care of by their parents. And so Jesus uses this picture and he says, whoever takes care of this child and receives this child in my name will also receive me, right? And so when, when we go and we serve, right? The people that need to be served, we look at someone, we see a need, and we figure out a way to meet that need. That's ministry, right? And when we do it in his name, we're doing it because of him. We're doing it because we love him. We're doing it because we want to serve him. When we do that, he says, not only will you receive me, you're going to receive the one who sent me, meaning we're going to receive the Father. We're going to receive God the Father when we love and we serve on those in need, right? When we offer our gifts to, to make them better, to love on them, to, to show them that we care, to show them that they have a heavenly father who loves them and cares for them, just like children need their parents, right? So this was a perfect picture here. And when we do that, we receive the father. And so in all of this, the question that we have to ask is, is what does that look like for me? What does that look like for you? What does service look like for all of us? Well, that's a good question. I Man, that's a question that you have to answer in your particular context. Maybe, maybe it's your workplace. Maybe you have people that you work with that you maybe don't like that much. You might be their boss even or something, or they might be your boss. But the thing that you have to ask is, how can I serve them? I know that they need something. Maybe they need the love of Christ more than anything else. How can you show them that love? Right? Maybe it's your family. Maybe it's a, a, a parent that needs your care or a brother or sister that needs your care, an aunt and uncle that needs your care. I don't, I don't know. But how can you serve them? How can you give them the service and the care that they need? Maybe it's in your school, right? Maybe it's the homeless. Maybe, maybe it's the, the uh, abused or victims of abuse. Maybe it's uh, fostering a, parent, a child. I, I don't know. Right, your context is is your context, right? It's going to look different for you than what it does for me, but that's the beauty of it, right? Whenever we see a need and we seek to meet that need in the name of Jesus Christ, right? When we put ourselves last by becoming a servant of all, it doesn't matter what is going on uh, in their life. We're not saying that we're above them. We're not saying we're better than them. In fact, we're saying, hey, I mean, I want to lift you up. I want to love you. I want to care for you. I want to receive you just like Christ received me. When we do that, that's when Jesus says that person is the greatest.